Okay, good morning children. Uh, here we are back again. Class 8 physics sound chapter 7. I think this is chapter 7. Okay, your notes have already been posted on the WhatsApp group. Go through it, copy it, understand it. Okay, I'm going to explain. Now, uh, we hear a lot of sounds all around us. In fact, we have terms like sound pollution, noise pollution, all those things, right? So, basically sound is produced by vibrating bodies. For any sound to be produced, a body has to vibrate. It doesn't necessarily mean that every body that vibrates produces sound, but the sound to be produced, a body has to be vibrating, right? Uh, sound actually travels in the form of waves they are series of compressions and rare fractions okay uh, that will be coming across these terms and all due to which sound travels okay crash trough and all i'll be doing it i'll be making a diagram okay so book says each sound we hear is a unique combination of three characteristics which are loudness or intensity pitch and quality or timber okay so these are the thing which on which a sound depends upon okay the veil the whole basis of sound is based on these things only okay so let's go through some of the terms that is related okay now uh, according to my book there's a diagram out here i'll just make it try to explain it in a simple manner This is your amplitude, okay, then from here till here, will be one oscillation. Now, this is the wavelength. Let me just make the diagram. Okay. Then we'll, I'll explain. Okay. So, pressed, trough. Now, amplitude, according to the book, the maximum displacement of a wave on either side of its mean position is known as amplitude. See, the wave is going here, this is the maximum point, then it is dipping down, going here, maximum point again. So, this is the amplitude, understood, the maximum displacement till where the wave can go. Oscillation, oscillation is one complete to and fro motion of an object or particle above its mean position is known as one complete vibration cycle or oscillation. See, this is one complete oscillation. Crest going up, trough going down. Okay, mean position up, mean position down, mean position. Okay, one oscillation, right? Wavelength. It is the distance between two, uh, two consecutive rare compressions or rare fractions. Okay, so distance between two waves. That's why wave length. Okay, there are terms like this. Scientific terms, compressions and rare fractions are there. Okay, I'll explain it. This distance is the same as the distance between two successive crests and troughs. Okay, and is denoted by the Greek letter lambda. This is the Greek letter, it is called lambda. Right, that is the symbol for wavelength. Okay, now what is time period? Time period is a time taken by a wave to complete one oscillation. Okay, so by a wave to complete one oscillation. How much time does it take in seconds, minutes, whatever? Okay, so how much does it take to complete one oscillation is called time period. Okay, now important terms frequency. Frequency 
of a wave is the number of oscillations completed by it in one second. Okay, if the frequency of is high, that means the number of waves being completed in one second will be more. If the frequency is less, the number of waves being produced in one second will be less. Okay, so that is what frequency is all about. Okay, and it is denoted by f frequency. denoted by F right and its unit is Hertz which is written as HZ okay and mathematically frequency is 1 upon time period F equals to 1 upon T this is the formula okay now let's go to the so in if you go to a uh, lab if you I don't know how many of you have seen a tuning fork this sort of a thing okay so you hold it here and when you strike it this vibrates and you bring it near the ear you can see here a buzzing sound okay that's called a tuning fork okay now what is loudness or intensity of a sound loudness is a characteristic of sound which distinguishes a feeble sound from a loud sound of the same frequency that's really a loud sound don't be too loud this is too loud bring them the volume you, the music is too loud i think these are the words that you hear from your parents or your elders when you're listening to a favorite song and because sometimes when a favorite song comes on the tv or you got a favorite song on a playlist so when your mood is right sometimes you get into the mood of listening it to in full blast okay that's when your parents or your elders tell you to reduce the loudness or it's too loud or when you speak too loudly people call you too loud what is all this okay now so I'm going to go through the definition again. Loudness is a characteristic of sound which distinguishes a feeble sound from a loud sound of the same frequency. It is the amount of sound energy received by unit area per second. Okay, loudness is nothing but it is the amount of sound energy received by a unit area per second. In one second, a small area, how much of sound energy does it receive? Okay. Loudness of a sound depends on its amplitude. Higher the amplitude, higher the louder the sound. Higher the amplitude, louder the sound. Lower the amplitude, lo lower the sound. As the amplitude of the wave is directly related to the energy it carries, we can say that greater the energy carried by a wave, louder is the sound produced. Okay, so higher the amplitude, louder the sound. Understood? So greater the energy carried by a wave, louder will be the sound. Lesser the energy carried by a sound wave, feebler will be the sound or the sound will have less loud, uh, intensity, right? Mm. Loudness of a sound increases with the increase in the area of a vibrating body. That's true. When we strike a small drum and a big drum, okay, now the big drum makes a louder noise. Why? Because the drum is bigger, okay, vibrating area is bigger, so the sound becomes louder. At the same time, a smaller drum, the area will be smaller, okay vibration produced will be lesser the sound will be feebler okay so loudness of a sound increases with an increase in the area of the vibrating body loudness of a sound also increases with decrease in the distance from the listener and the source that's very true whenever you hear a sound from far away you hear you won't be too loud but as you go towards the sound you go nearer towards the source of the sound the sound becomes louder and louder and basically if you have a sound box in a house and you're playing it and uh, you are outside the house the music won't be so loud to you but if you enter the room and go near the sound box the sound becomes very loud okay so a sound of the same frequency heard at a small distance will be louder when it is heard from a greater distance okay some other factors on which the loudness of sound depends are atmospheric temperature that's very true due to temperature also sound energy sound molecules gets carried away it goes up okay and pressure okay pressure also the pressure makes uh, pressure all de uh, decides the amount of molecules that are there in a air molecules or whatever molecules that are there in an area in a given unit of time and the velocity of the wind okay wind also carries out see sound cannot travel in vacuum sound requires a medium to travel okay so in fact Whenever we are talking to someone in the room is the air in the middle which is transmitting the sound from the mouth to the ears of the person. Okay, and that 
sound energy vibrates the eardrums and you can perceive the sensation of sound right so if the it's a windy area if the air molds are getting blown away by, by the wind even if you're talking at the top of it sometimes it might be difficult for you to hear each other okay now um, next we are going to do is pitch of a sound what is pitch of the sound the characteristic of a sound that differentiates a shrill sound from a hoarse sound is called pitch okay shrill is very high pitch sound which sometimes is annoying to the ear hoarse sound is a much more of a pitch sound i will call it a treble okay hoarse sound i would call it a bass okay now the pitch of the sound depends upon its frequency what is frequency the number of oscillation number of vibration by a body produced in one second okay so the pitch of a sound depends on its frequency a sound which wave with a high frequency has a high pitch that means the frequency is very high that means the number of vibrations are very high it will have a high pitch that's why a woman's boy, voice is much more shriller than a man's voice in fact your father's voice will be much more or less shriller than your mother's voice right your father scolding you and the mother scolding you. I think your mother scolding effect, uh, the scolding of a mother has more effect. I think it has got to do with a lot with the frequency of the sound and the pitch. Because if she keeps shouting with that high pitch voice, it starts annoying, it starts irritating you. So you, are, you have got no other options but to listen to her, right? Your father's voice is much more hoarse, much more bass, okay? It might not have that much of an effect on you, okay? Similarly, the sound of a whistle has a higher pitch than that of a drum, right? So, frequency is high in a whistle. But then, what is the difference between pitch and frequency? You know that sound travels in the form of compressions and rare fractions, okay? Compressions and rare fractions, right? Okay? The number of rare fractions or compressions that pass a point in one second is termed as the frequency of the sound wave, okay? So, compression and rare fractions, again, if I go back to the definition that I told you earlier, the frequency of a wave is the number of oscillations, right? So, compressions and rare fractions, number of oscillations completed by it in one second, which is the same as the number of rare fractions and compressions that pass a point in one second is termed as the frequency of the sound wave, okay? So, you have to relate terms like this to understand it better. So, when a large number of compressions or rare fractions per second or a sound of greater frequency reaches your ears, it is perceived as high pitch sound by your ears, okay. That the frequency is high, that means number of compression and rare fractions is more, that means number of oscillations is more, so the so sound that reaches the ear is shrill sound, okay. But if your compression and rare fractions are less, that means frequency is less, that means of course oscillations are less, that means the sound that reaches your ear will not be such of such nature, of a high pitch nature, okay. Now, hence pitch is the sensation of frequency of a sound wave on your ears, understood? So that is the relationship between pitch and frequency, okay? So higher the frequency, higher the pitch, lesser the frequency, lesser the pitch, okay? Uh, there's an activity given on page number 94. If you've got a bicycle with you, you just need to take a card or a small piece of plastic, a hard plastic, and on the back wheel, you need to rotate the pedal of a bike. So when you're rotating the pedal slowly, the sound will not be so high pitch, okay, you will have a lesser pitch sound. But after some time when you rotate the wheels very fast, then the pitch of the sound will also increase, okay. So when the wheel was set in motion gently, a sound of low pitch was heard as the card hits against the spokes of the rotating wheel. However, as the speed of rotation of the wheel, in other words, its frequency, okay, increases the sound becomes more shrill. Conclusion, the pitch of the sound increases with the increase in its frequency, okay? Now, quality of sound or timber, okay? The quality of sound or timber distinguishes two notes of the same frequency and loudness produced by different bodies, okay? For example, uh, sound produced by two different musical instruments, a uh, guitar and a sitar, let's say, okay? With the same pitch of frequency and the loudness, okay? Or amplitude, Fre whenever we talk about frequency, a uh, pitch, it's frequency, Whenever we talk about loudness, amplitude, as I told you, loudness is totally dependent on amplitude, pitch is totally dependent on frequency, right? So, both is, let's say guitar and sitar, we are playing, playing both the instruments, okay, frequency is the same, right? 
and uh, amplitude is the same but still the sound of the guitar and the sitar is totally different. There is a difference. What is this difference? This difference is because there is another thing, there is a third, second thing that is there whenever we are talking about uh, music for musical instruments, it will call harmonics. Okay? Because a sound wave also has a unique pattern of secondary waves. Okay? The already primary waves are there. There is a secondary waves called harmonics. Okay? So, for guitar, let us say the harmonics might be like this. Okay? So, the sitar, it might be like this. Understood? So, it is because of this that the sound becomes totally difference. So, no two musical instruments can have the same harmonics. Harmonics is different. It is unique quality. Okay? So, this is why the quality of sound produced by two instruments are always distinct. Okay? Now, so the three important points, loudness, intensity of the sound, pitch of the sound, quality of the sound. These are the things that uh, we talked about. The Each sound that we hear is human combination of three characteristics. Okay? Now, we come to what is music and what is noise. Okay. Music is something that is pleasant to your ears. Noise is something that irritates your ears. Okay. So, what is the difference between new music and noise? Music is sound produced by regular vibrations. Okay. Noise is sound produced by irregular vibrations. Okay. Uh, so, let us say this thing out here. This is, let us say this is a musical noise. I okay. will try to make it a long one. So, this is one tune, then suddenly the tune changes, okay, then again change in tune. So, you can see that it is gradual, this is gradual, okay, but what happens in noise? Noise is like this, noise is like this. There is no particular pattern. The pattern is going on changing, it is fluctuating, understood, there is no flow, there is no gradual reduction or gradual increase in the waves okay it's very erratic that is noise understood that's the basic difference so regular vibrations produce music irregular vibrations produce noise understood okay the sounds of traffic and voices of people in a crowd are example of noise the difference between noise and music is given in a table Musical sound has please, ple uh, pleasant effect on the ears. True, noise is irritating effect on the ears. It is produced by regular vibrations in the material. Music, noise, it is produced by irregular vibrations in the material. True, irregular as I have showed you. Okay. Amplitude of vibration and frequency does not change suddenly as I told you. Okay. It does not change suddenly. Right, you see gradual, there is a gradual change. Right? Okay. Noise changes very suddenly, erratic, very, very erratic. Okay. The waveform is regular in music. In noise, the waveform is very, very irregular. Okay. Now, musical instruments can be grouped into. Now, whenever we talk about sound, mu uh, music, and all, I think musical instruments, I think that's what this is all about. Musical instruments totally, completely follows the concept of sound. Right? So, can be grouped into three main types depending on what vibrates while playing that musical instrument. Air, strings or stretched membrane. Okay. Like flute, bugle, uh, saxophone, it is air, column of air that is vibrating within a column. Okay. Within a closed column. Then we have strings like a sitar, guitar, violin, all the banjo, all the strings are strings. Okay. Stretched membrane, your congo, your tabla your uh, um, your drums okay kettle drums all those things this comes on the stretch membrane okay now wind instruments the sanskrit term is susir vadya okay the flute the shanai very indian uh, the pungi uh, that is been uh, been on snake shamas flute okay that thing the saxophone the clarinet the french horn the trumpet and the trombone are uh, some of the wind instruments. These instruments produce sound by vibrating air columns inside the hollow of an ear. So that's why I think flute also it has got holes. When you put the finger on the hole, you are stopping an air column from going out. When you lift it, you are letting the air column go out. Okay. So when you are stopping the air column, 
the sound will be different frequency will be different when you let the air go out it will be different so based on how you move around with your fingers you can produce music of different notes okay similarly with uh, trumpet with french horn with saxophone you know it's all about that only right how you regulate the air column that is inside the tube right the pitch and frequency of wind instruments can be varied by changing the length of the vibrating air column okay like didgeridoo i think this is slowly catching up right now it's aboriginals of australia they have this big wind instrument okay they blow into it and they produce a very low guttural vibrating noise okay and then it's not so easy to do it i've tried it a couple of times it looks easy when you try to do it it's not so easy to take all that sound and consistently for some time okay so, so it's all about the vibrating air columns right now next we have is stringed instruments instruments with string on them strings instruments such as violin guitar sitar sarod veena um, banjo cello produce sound when the strings are set into vibrations by plucking striking or drawing a bow over the strings like a violin you draw a bow over the strings these instruments are wooden frames which are partially hollow from it within so electric guitar and all they have got a pickup and all that is total different but in normal guitar an acoustic guitar um, bass guitar whatever it is hollow so in that hollow that area acts as the area where the air columns will vibrate and the sound is produced from the in strings that have been struck so these instruments are strings of different thickness so as to produce sounds of different pitch like a guitar it has got six strings right it has got different thickness and when you strike one string the bass guitar has got a bass sound uh, the first string has got a very treble sound very high pitch sound so it depends all upon the thickness okay moreover the player can also change the length of the vibration strings to produce different sounds okay so these are stringed instruments the next we have is percussion instruments percussion instruments are known as uh, okay so string instruments the sanskrit term is tanto vadya now the percussion instruments are known as avanadu vadya okay so instruments such as drum timpani snare drum tabla dholak mridagam produce sounds of vibrating by stretching membrane okay so we all know that drums and all round structure there over which there's a stretch membrane so when you strike this membrane sound is produced right that's how it goes that's how the sound is produced the membrane vibrates on being struck some instruments such as cymbals xylophone etc produce sound by the vibration of the whole body so okay in a drum set there's a cymbal also such instruments that produce sound on striking shaking scraping or rubbing are called percussion instruments percussion instruments are mainly classified into two groups pitched and unpitched okay pitched instruments these instruments are used to produce sounds of more than one pitch understood unpitched instruments these instruments produce sound with no definite pitch pitched instruments they are used to produce musical notes okay unpitched instruments they are used to provide rhythms irrespective of the song's harmony or melody okay pitch instruments uh xylophones marimba tubular bells etc and pitch instruments are snare drums cymbals etc okay now we have reed instruments also are those musical instruments that produce sound when air is blown through them example your harmonium your mouth organ okay harmonium also when you if you've seen okay you'll have to blow keep blowing air otherwise it will not produce any sound okay like a more mouth organ also harmonica right you have to blow the air through the slots and then only the vibrating metals that is there inside produce sounds of different notes okay now monotone you have daily conversations with your parents what is monotone friends teachers and siblings you change the pitch volume rhythm timbre and speed of a voice to express your meaning for instance you make a voice assertive while asking a question stress a word to add emphasis pause to add suspense vary your voice to express different emotions okay so every day when you're talking on a light like right now also when i'm talking whenever i have to stress on certain terms i will have a different quality of a sound okay the way i sound will be different uh, if you have to be angry assertive if you have to be kind of begging your sound, voice is slow all those things are there okay so however it could happen that while you give speech your tone remains unvarying and which you might end up saying everything in a flat tone like a robotic voice okay a sound which never changes 
or goes up or down is called a monotone in one tone only like a robotic voice right there is no fluctuation humans cannot have a monotone you will have to you will have to have different notes right so monotone sound never changes in pitch loudness timbre or speed everything remains the same so if a person speaks in monotone his voice is flat and boring it would seem as if the person has no interest in the audience or his message moreover he won't be able to communicate his message to his audience okay so i think the greek word for one tone is monotonia from which the word monotone and monotonous are derived which means dull and monotonous comes from the word monotonous it's a monotonous uh, situation the whole picnic was monotonous you know it's the same thing going on again and again it becomes basically whenever you use the word monotonous we are trying to connect it to the word boring okay now what is the unit of sound unit of sound is always in decibels D, capital B. Okay, this is the unit of sound. Unit of sound is decibels. Book says the loudness intensity of sound is measured in decibels. Human ears can pick up from 10 decibels to 180 decibels. Okay, it can pick up from 10 decibels to 180 decibels. A sound between 50 and 60 decibels is considered normal. Sound up to 80 decibels can be tolerated. Not good, not normal, can be tolerated. Sounds above 80 decibels can, be, can have harmful effects. Now that is going to affect you. It's going to irritate you. You know, noise pollution children is so dangerous these days that we don't realize. Like, see, we see air pollution, we see water pollution, we see that pollution, this pollution. Noise pollution, you might think, oh, noise, it's something abstract which you cannot see. But if you are subjected to an area where there's a lot of noise pollution, you will have very low concentration levels. You will be, most of the time you will be irritated, irritated. You won't be able to concentrate. In fact, it even plays around with the sleep pattern. You will not get a good night's sleep, a proper sleep. Okay, your food eating pattern also gets affected. Okay, and sometimes due to all these things, you might get residual diseases like diabetes and blood pressure and all this thing. So, you know, one noise pollution, understood? And a person's temperament, how patient you are, how calm you are, how fast you get irritated, all these things can also be affected by noise, understood? So, if you are subjected to noise pollution, it's better that you move away from And the culture of headphones, children, you might think that you look cool by putting a headphone in the ear and mo moving around. Yeah, for a certain time, maybe 15 minutes, half an hour, it's okay. But if you're moving around with headphones the whole day, the sound, the blast of noise in your ears and your eardrums are vibrating the whole day, it is a bio-organ. It's organ made naturally, organically. It will, after some time, when the eardrum will start becoming flaccid and it starts becoming not so tight, it will start vibrating lesser and lesser and lesser. What will happen? You will start turning into a deaf person. Understood. So, you have to be very careful about all these things, children. Okay. So, there's a... It says a sound of about 90 decibels and more causes many health problems. Some of these health problems are feeling of annoyance, as I told you. Aggression, anger, anxiety and stress. Tension. Okay. High blood pressure and heart problems. See, heart problems also. Headache. Feeling of fatigue, fatigue means tiredness and sleep disturbance. You won't be able to sleep properly. Reduced work efficiency. If you are not functioning properly, you think you'll be able to work properly? No, you won't be able to work properly also. Loss of hearing. Very important. I, I have a friend. He used to listen to headphones, uh, music the whole day. He used to work and headphones used to be in, in his ears. And he did this for, I think, a year or so. Right now, he's deaf. He does not hear properly. Now, these days, when you have to, we have to communicate with him, we have to use sign language. He was a normal person who could hear. Now, even the way he talks has changed because he cannot hear anymore. That's the other, one side. The other side, it affects your psychology. What happens to you when you turn into a deaf person? That means you are turned into a, a physically challenged person now. Okay, you come under the different category. So, it affects your psychology, it affects your confidence, it affects the way you look at yourself. 
it affects so many things in your life okay so you don't you should not play around with this kind of things okay so noise pollution is a very important topic you need to pay attention to it okay like if you see busy street traffic the noise is 70 to 75 decibels as i told you 80 decibels you can tolerate so 75 decibels is also high vacuum cleaner looks like a harmless object but look at the decibel level 80 to 85 decibels very high Large orchestra, 90 to 98 decibels. Headphones at maximum volume, 100 to 105 decibels. See, I'm telling you, it's very dangerous. Jet aircraft, 130 to 140 decibels. Understood? So, all these things are going to affect you. All these things are going to harm you. So, you need to be careful in the future. So, thank you, children. Uh, I think we're done with this right now. So, we'll be continuing with the next chapter later on.